Before I start today's video, I want to answer a quick question. A few people have been asking what program I use to record these videos. Up until now, I've been using Camtasia, but there's this new program called Demo Creator from Wondershare. I used it for this and future videos, and they are also sponsoring this video in particular as well. So I have switched to this new program uh, because it's a lot easier to use and also renders videos a lot faster. So let me show you the program in action. So I'm going to drag this here and this picture. And for this one, I want to fill the whole space. So I'm going to use the scale here. So that now it's filling the whole space. And what I want to do is, so I want to change the speed here really easily. Uh, but in this case, what I want to do is I want to add a transition. So I want to go into the transitions. There's a bunch of really good ones here that you don't see in other programs. So let's try out this one. So all you have to do is drag it in between the two pieces and let's display it. And that's what that one looks like, which looks pretty cool. So now let me use another tool uh, that I thought was pretty cool, especially for static images. And that's the pan and zoom. So I'm gonna just drag that in here. Let me expand the image. And what I'll do here is I'm just gonna uh, enlarge this and double click it. And here you can change a few settings on how to use this tool. I'm gonna do this this way, so I'm gonna move it like here. And now if I play it, uh, let me just go ahead and move this closer. So now if I play it, you can see that the uh, pan and zoom, it's kind of adding some motion to the actual picture. So that's one of the cool things that you can do here is uh, use that tool. And they just have other tools too that you can use to just add more motion to what would otherwise be static. All right, another thing I want to show is if you do a lot of green screen, you can uh, also remove green screens here. So let me just add this on top. So this has a green screen on it and I'm just going to add the effect. So just drag this into the video or picture. As you can see, it automatically does it. I'm going to increase the tolerance here just to make this a little bit cleaner. And obviously it doesn't have to be a green screen. You can use any other colors that you can remove. So that's just an example of how easy it is to use this program. Uh, the program is really easy to use. You can just open the recording menu and start recording. They let you change the screen size, frames per second, and you can also use some of the tools while recording, such as the pen tools to draw on the screen. You can enable highlighting and mouse focus and a lot more. If you guys want to check out Demo Creator, there's a link in the video description where you can get a free trial. It's also relatively cheap, so you can also buy it as well if you wanted to. Anyway, once again, I want to thank Wondershare for sponsoring this video. In today's video, we're going to be making a pickaxe. And this is going to be more on the realistic side than the stylized, as we usually make here. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start out by making it in Maya, mostly. So in this case, I'm not going to be using ZBrush for sculpting or anything like that. We're going to be using strictly Maya and then Substance Painter. And I'm going to use Sub-D mode to create the high poly model. So in this case, I'm going to be making the high poly first. And then we're going to create the low poly by pretty much just kind of uh, removing some of the unnecessary geo and just fixing a few things here and there. So like I said, I'm going to be using sub D mode and I'm just going to be adding the details this way. And this is just some standard uh, polygonal modeling here in Maya. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit more realistic than stylized. So let's go ahead and just add a few of those details here. And now I'm looking at a reference image. Uh, Obviously, you can just look for a few pickaxe pictures online and you'll get the idea on how to make it. And like I said, this is going to be a little bit more realistic than the usual uh, thing that we do here in this channel, which is stylized. I think it's good to break up the... Uh, it's good to make new things once in a while, try new styles as well. Uh, in this case, going for more realistic. 
uh, but the model itself is relatively simple. And I want to keep it simple so that we can just add some details through Substance Painter. So we got the pickaxe, it's going to be used for mining. Uh, and speaking of mining, I'm not sure if anyone has looked into NFTs lately, uh, but they look like they have been blowing up. Um, looks like a lot of people are talking about them now, which is interesting. If anyone doesn't know, NFT stands for uh, non fungible Token. Uh, it's pretty much kind of like a crypto token. Uh, but the difference is that it's a token that uh, comes with uh, the ownership of something. Uh, so in this case, NFTs are mostly connected to selling a piece of artwork. Um, so the token itself comes with the ownership of whatever art you are selling. If you have been paying attention, they have been going for a lot of money lately for some reason. And uh, I just think it's really interesting that they are selling for so much money. When you consider that the art itself uh, is not necessarily the greatest, uh, but I think the people who are buying these are not people who care about the art. I think these are people who are looking for an investment, mostly. So it's mostly people who probably are into buying cryptos and stuff like that, uh, and just investors. So I think that's what's happening and that's why the prices are so insane. So I did actually make, I, so I did actually made one just because I wanted to test it out and see how that went. Uh, and surprisingly, the thing that no one talks about is that it's actually expensive to make one. If you want to make an NFT, uh, because it uses the Ethereum um, network, I guess uh, it's a little bit expensive just to make one. So I made one, and it actually ended up costing me, I think it was close to two hundred dollars actually. Uh, when I made it, which is a lot, obviously, um, and uh, a lot of these are not selling, obviously, uh, there's only a few ones, the few that are selling are selling for a lot of money, but the majority are probably not really selling, so, so it got me thinking that the real geniuses here are the uh, platforms that allow you to sell them and create them, because uh, obviously I think they are the ones making all the money. Um, so I think they, the platforms themselves are the real winners here. So yeah, I made one and I put it up for sale and uh, obviously never sold. Well, it hasn't sold. I still own it. Um, it's on Rarible right now. I think it's open, on Open OpenSea, I think it's the website. Um, uh, if you want to look at it, uh, it's under 3DX. You should be able to find it. <laughs> But anyway, it's, a, it's just an interesting market right now. Uh, but I think that for artists, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think I would recommend it because like I said, it's actually really expensive to make one. And uh, if you really wanted to sell it, I think you will have to be, you have to do a lot of advertising. Like if you have a, lo a large following, you could probably sell it. Um, but if you don't, I think you're going to have a hard time trying to sell one. And I think a lot there's a lot of randomness as well. I think people just buy them randomly just to see which ones are going to sell for a lot of money. Um, but I think it, for the most part, usually mostly the ones that are selling are from people who have a large following and are advertising them and stuff like that. So if you don't have a large following and uh, don't have a way to advertise, you. Uh, your NFT, I, I don't think it would be a good idea to make one. Just because, like I said, it actually costs a lot of money to make one. So I wouldn't be surprised if most people are actually losing money on this. And uh, the majority uh, of people who are making money are just a few a few people. And then obviously the marketplaces are making the most money really because they're the ones that are getting all the payments for just creating it. But anyway, just, that's just my, my two cents on the whole NFT thing. Um, I do think the technology is probably going to be used for other things uh, because it's really interesting to be able to own something through a token. Um, but I honestly don't think 
the whole art scene is going to last that long for this type of thing. I think the technology is probably going to be ended up. It's going to be end, it's going to end up being used for other things. I think. Uh, but anyway, here back to our model, and uh, obviously I took this into Substance Painter and added some of the existing smart materials that come from Painter. Obviously, changing some settings and adding and deleting layers as well. So like I said, I'm going for a little bit more realistic on this one. And I want to make the edges look a little bit more uh, used. So there's a little bit less... Uh, so they're a little bit less shiny because I think they have been used more. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's what this model is all about. It's just creating it using existing materials. So as you can see, you can use existing materials with Painter and overlay them together and also use masks to add more details. And uh, I think it's a good way, especially for realistic models, uh, just to add those details and make it look a little bit more realistic and especially adding your own layers on top of the existing materials is really helpful. So the last thing here I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of rust don't want this to look too old or rusty. It has been used. It's not too old. So I just want to add a tiny bit of rust on it. I am interested to hear from you guys uh, if you are, I guess, invested in the whole NFT thing and uh, what your thoughts are on that and if you think they're going to be here in the future as well. Anyway, here is what the model looks like in Marmosa Toolback. So if you like this video, uh, do me a favor, hit the like button, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below, and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.